All right, everybody. My name is Sophia Tran, and I am joined by Ricky Bryant. Mr. Ricky Bryant, what is your role here? Let everybody know. Well, this year I'm working uh, as a referee. Okay. And uh, working with with the staff uh, here at the tournament desk as well, and doing referee work uh, primarily on the Accustat table. Nice, nice, nice. We are here at the 2019 Derby City Classics. This is the 21st annual Derby City and my first Derby City. So this is really exciting. It's really fun. It's just a crazy environment full of energy and a lot of really good pool. Yep. Speaking of, we have this match. It's a one pocket race to three. Shannon Dalton versus, you are practicing? Ruslan Chenikov. Yes. The Siberian Express. And you said Shannon's nickname is? Shannon the Cannon, Dalton. Yep, I've been coming to Derby since 2009, ever since it moved across the river to the casino here. All right. We had the Ruslan breaking, and now Shannon is at the table. Yes. We have the, the rule in place this year that uh, if you make a ball in your pocket on the break, that it would be a re-rack and re-break by the same breaker. And one pocket is the only game of the three games that it is alternating break <laughs> of, I'm sorry, of banks, one pocket, and nine ball. Correct. Of the three primary curriculums of uh, the Derby City. For all of you watching that do not know about one pocket, it's like it says, it's it's one pocket. The players are looking to pocket eight balls, no matter what. doesn't have to be in any particular number, into their pocket. And because of where Ruslan broke, this will be his pocket, the bottom left. And then this is Shannon's pocket on the bottom right. At this point, Shannon's looking to see how he can possibly avoid Ruslan making any of these balls in his pocket. He's going to play a safety, try to bury the ball, and he took a foul. Yep. So he went ahead and so took a foul. So he'll be on a minus one. <laughs> so he will owe a point. What I'm going to do is... Because he owes, and at this point, um, the score is 0 0. I am just going to put an asterisk next to his name. <laughs> Make sure that it actually shows up. Yes, this is. And the Ruslan figured out the rack and made a ball in his pocket and is still shooting. And for people that are not familiar with one pocket, the reason we said it's at minus one, if he had had any balls, he would have lost one of those back and would have been on a minus when you don't have any balls to give back due to a foul, uh, you end up going into negative territory with your score. Looks like he's going to combo this and still leave him a solid shot. Oh, I, th I think beautiful. that 11 may go past it. It'll be yes, fine. Yes. It'll be fine. Yep. In almost natural position. And even if it didn't, these guys are so solid that they could make a lot of magic happen. Uh, and yep. Should have a pretty good angle to come back around the stack. Yep, that's what he's pointing to up table where he wants to come around the stack after he makes this next shot so that he's got a big part of the stack back toward his pocket again. Basically leaving his key wall somewhere in this area. Absolutely. Because 
he you know, has. When you see a player pointing at the table, they're trying to visualize, gets their subconscious to thinking about that's where they want the ball to go. Mm -hmm. You will it where you want it, right? Absolutely. It's uh, something I had an instructor taught me a long time ago. Don't think about the next ball you want and have that in your subconscious. You end up froze to it and no shot. Mm-hmm. And just, yeah, he got Beautiful. right in that pocket. I yep. like to draw my circles nice and big so yep. that <laughs> if it lands in there, I feel like I feel like I did something right. Oh, well I better give him that point. Mm. Well, he may be out here. We'll see. <laughs> I was preventing myself from saying I, I caught myself, but all right, you said it. Yep. Oh, beautiful. He is just solid. He's got that. He's got that eight, and he's done with this first game in probably record time. I wish I would have timed it. Oh wow! Rack number one is down. Already, wow! Well. As, as we said, it's alternating breaks, so it will be Shannon breaking this time. What did I hear? Uh, Kind of an, an astounding, what was it, uh, that I heard the Cho Hands match was only, what, 15 minutes? Oh, my goodness. Or three racks or something to that effect earlier? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And did so Tony take it down? Some, yeah, Tony oh won. Oh, my gosh. Uh, like I heard that, you know, in the past, th that story that everybody says, uh, Shane Van Boning did it in 16 minutes no. or something. It looks like these guys, I think there needs to be like a little side bucket bet for how fast you can get a one pocket match done. All right, so Shannon will keep this pocket and this will be Ruslan's pocket. Yep, Ruslan. He's playing aggressive. Played position, but played somewhat aggressive. You know, I I think I think that there might be a possibility for that bank. Yeah, but if he misses, he leaves the table wide open. That's mm -hmm. it. That's the reasoning. I don't. He's not looking at the straight back. I don't think. I think he's looking to get that ball out of the pocket possibly. But you know, now he's looking at the straight back. Yeah, I think he is because I think if he even draws it back a tiny little bit, he may still be safe because I don't see this going. Oh, but you know what? The eight goes like oh you yeah, said. Oh yeah. There's yeah. too much that goes if you end yep. up leaving it even in this area. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Shoot. So, so it's best to play safe. <laughs> yes. And by playing safe, how would you make it so that you would remove that six ball out of the way? I'm like Shannon. I'd have to be walking around the table thinking about that one a lot. Oh, yeah. And that's what's got him. And I know he's kind of thought about. Off the you know, seven, maybe. Off the seven or, playing, or playing a combo with the eight to it to, to, to move two of them. Oh, yeah, because if he did, uh, if he moved to, depending on how he has to hit it, I think that he would have to hit the eight ball this way yep. and hit thin on that six. Because if he hits it too thick, that eight ball stays right there. Coming off the 15, I believe. Doing absolutely nothing that I said. There we go. Wow, look at that. Yep. That's a pretty strong shot. Yes, it is. And actually ended up moving the 15 toward his pocket as well as playing a nice safe behind him. Double bonus. Yep. Let's see if he can lay the cue ball in the pocket over here without scratching. Oh. oh close. That's going to burn.
You know, I'm I'm not sure exactly how much one pocket uh -oh. these guys from from uh, Europe get to play, except when they're in the United States. I don't know. There's a whole lot of one pocket played over in Europe. Russia. Yeah. yeah. But they seem to catch on pretty fast. Between that and the banks, last night the young man from Kuwait got into the finals of oh banks and played just lights out. I adore him, Omar. Yes. That was it. Yes. Thank you, sir. Man. So he's thinking pretty long about this because... Yeah, he's got you know, that... Uh, he doesn't have too much. Uh, no. Nah, he's still not biting on that one straight back either. No, if I were him, I would just foul. Well, he didn't have to foul. And I think he's probably got, got you know, the cue ball tied up pretty well. I these guys can bank so decent and I guess he doesn't want to be that aggressive to take the six yeah. because if he misses then Shannon will be out but I just feel like there they there were options yeah. Ruslan is a smarter player I've seen a lot of the yeah, guys be really aggressive absolutely sometimes when they start playing safe it's like whoever the first one to blink and gets and and gets tired of the safe is the mm -hmm. one that ends up losing. You gotta have patience. <laughs> Who's a little bit more impatient than the other? But unfortunately that's one of the reasons we've got some time uh, limits and things in the... Uh, he, he fouled. Yep, lost the ball. Lost points. Yep. So he'll have a negative one. He does have a negative one. Yep. Just saw him put a marker on the rail for his negative one. And I'll put in I'll mark next to his name that he owes. But you know, it's uh, one pocket reminds me a lot of chess match. It's uh, mm -hmm. moves, moves and counter moves. Exactly. There was a term that was being thrown around quite a bit yesterday. It was being cautiously aggressive. That compared to old school one pocket, um, compared to younger players that play today, they, they shoot so straight, they get so aggressive that, that they get an opening and they just, they don't, they, no fear. They just keep pounding them in. But yes, one of the rules this year as far as time limit, uh, at two and a half hours, the matches are being checked on. And if nobody's on the hill, the match is put on a warning and uh, rechecked again in 30 minutes. And if nobody's on the hill, there's a sudden death one rack to win the match. Wow. Because my understanding, we had some matches go well over four hours of one may have gone seven last year. And with this many people in the tournament, you just can't have that to happen. Okay, so Shannon tried to play a safety, but I think he sold out because yes. the six definitely cuts over. And if Ruslan can get 
you know, straight back. He's got he's he's got opportunities to make some make some points in here. Well, well, kind of a mistake. He gave Shannon one, but moved one into his pocket as well. He almost gave Shannon one. Yeah. Well, he he's got it hanging. So. Mm hmm. So then he sold out. <laughs> yep, our. I see new, that happening. New Hall of Famer that's being inducted this year, uh, Scott Frost. I actually was at the match when Scott won the one pocket here, playing Silva, and Silva took the shot, and it was so beautiful and so clean, but he bumped one in for Scott to win the Derby City. How heartbreaking would that be? Uh, That's because you know. in this game, if you make one in your opponent's pocket, they get the point for it. Yeah. It's how many balls make it into that pocket, no matter who made it. Right. As long as there's no foul. No matter who, no matter how. Yeah. As long as no foul. I mean, you hear about pool players saying, man, I gave him that game. Yep. That's literally giving the game. That's heartbreaking. Shannon is back to zero. Okay. So after this inning, if he does not run it all the way out and just clear it, he will have to spot a ball back on the table. Right. Now to actually get out before he started this inning, uh, he would have needed eight, would have needed nine balls. Nine balls. Because he was at negative one. Mm-hmm. I am learning so much. I really didn't know much about one pocket. I knew sort of the basic gist of it. Like I knew how, um, how you would be able to score and how you would win. I just didn't understand all of the strategy and all of the different things you have to factor in before you actually take a shot. Shannon gave that point to Ruslan, but he also there's left him pretty there's tough. There's Shannon spotting the mm -hmm. one. So at this point, it is 1-1. One, one. On the ball count. And one to zero on the game count. Correct. Yeah, at times as a strategy in one pocket, when one's hanging that way, they will play the cue ball to follow it in and be a scratch and that ball would come up but you would also have to give up another ball at the same time. Mm -hmm. But that is a strategy some of these people use. One of the matches I saw today was Hill Hill with John Smith. John Smith went down negative five and oh came my back gosh. and won the match. Negative five. In the, in, in the final match of the game. Oh my goodness. Yesterday, I got the pleasure of being able to commentate on Sky Woodward, and oh my gosh, it only was yesterday, and yeah. I can't even remember now. Well, Sky grew up in uh, Banks and One Pocket Country in uh, in Kentucky. There it is. And that's kind of the way Shannon grew up. Mm -hmm. Shannon's been playing since he was a, a youngster. So they're not they're not fresh they're not green, oh. but um oh okay that's what it was. Omar and I were um, commentating on um, Skyler and Chris Melling's match, wow. and we were wondering what is the most negative amount of points that someone has has gotten in a game, and you just told me that Schmidt was negative five. Yeah. So I'm gonna share that news with him, <laughs> and I think he's gonna get a good laugh about that. Okay. Well, that was an aggressive play. A lot that of the was. guys, you'll see them playing a lot softer. Because now uh, what's looking at? To keep, the, keep at? the ball from when you miss going all the way back to your opponent's pocket. Mm 
Nice combination. Good position for the next shot. I'm thinking that he is going to strike into the seven. I wonder if you put, let's see. You put some top English on it if it's going to squirt that way. Okay, never mind. How did he do that, do you think? Do you think he punched it with some, a little bit of bottom? Not sure. That was a, that was interesting move, and from our angle, I'm mm -hmm. it's really tough sometimes to yeah. tell because of where the camera angles are. Well, you know, I've had people tell me when they're watching a player's play, said, "I don't know how they shoot that shot." I said, "Everything looks like they're putting bottom on it." Well, the guys are looking for center ball, and they're doing their practice strokes toward the bottom. Toward of the, the bottom, ball. correct. And then when they actually make their shot, tip's going to come up to where they want to hit it. They know. It's easier to judge based on the relationship from the ball to the table than yes. it would be just point to the ball. Yes. Absolutely. absolutely. Yep. Once I figured that out, oh my goodness. It was beautiful. It was an epiphany for me. <laughs> well, he's kind of in a quandary here as to how he wants to move as much over toward his pocket or does he have anything he can make? I think he's shooting for a safety here. Oh, I th I'm, I'm, wondering I'm very uh, sure that's what the plan is, but he wants to move as much toward his pocket and with that safety as possible. I think where he wants to land is ultimately in a, in a perfect world, he would want that cue ball to be frozen on the nine. Right. And he was held up a little bit because of players shooting on the table next to him. Basically right there would be perfect scenario. And I think the only way that I could see that happening is um, off of here, well. trailing this way and coming back probably off the rail there. Yes. He's going for that. Oh, not even. He's going to put the ball over there. Again, this is a guessing game for me. And I'm guessing a lot and guessing wrong or guessing incorrectly. Yes. It doesn't quite get there. Uh, it I knew it was going to get a rail from the angle it was coming. It wouldn't go on. But what he did there also is he controlled where his cue ball was, yep. is, and if he doesn't make that one ball, it's okay because he got it close to the pocket. In a perfect world, he would have had it to where there was no way that Shannon could even get to the one. Right. He would have preferred to have jawed it and left it hanging. Correct. He's going to take that one across and try and bring a couple of balls back toward his pocket with mm -hmm. it. Basically leaving the cue ball back where it was. Yep. Oh, nice. That was very, very yep. nice. That yep. nine ball is very, very close to the pocket. You can still tinker around with it and not make it in, but it's like a 50-50 to me. You go around that area, it might go in. However, that's me. I'm not a pro, and those guys see probably 15 ways to make it not go in. And have the ball, you know, hugged up on it. I'm just here to talk about other I'm nonsense. Just, <laughs> I always amazed at watching the, uh, watching them, especially when we were watching the banks last night. Uh, they, they only take two looks and tell you two rails, three rails, four rails, mm -hmm. and. Uh, don't walk around, don't have to walk around and just watch the balls go. 
Look at how he tore that one out. It looked like it was so deep, but he tore it out without making it. Mm-hmm. Uh, put the cue ball in a pretty good position. Going to be an interesting. So I think Ruslan is looking. I wonder if. I wonder if he's going to try to play another safety and make sure that he leaves the cue ball in this area still. Not even. What I meant was yeah. back where it is. Interesting position. Though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Whew. He was flirting there because if Shannon were to scratch, he would have to... Um, not only forfeit a point, but also give his opponent ball in hand. Yes, and then with, and in one pocket though, ball in hand, you're in the kitchen mm -hmm. to uh, to shoot. It's not like a, a rotation games or eight ball mm -hmm. or ball in hand would be anywhere on the table. But with the way those were setting, those are, would have been easy shots for for these pro players. Absolutely. So speaking of Hall of Fame, are you attending the Hall of Fame dinner? I, I am planning to. So Scott Frost is being inducted, and Scott uh, is a longtime friend. And mm -hmm. oh my goodness, he scratched. Yes, he scratched. So he loses the ball as he spots it. Uh, <laughs> Shannon has ball in hand in the kitchen. That scenario that we were just talking about. Yep. Yeah, perfect position. Coming off of this shot, he should have a Very nice. plethora of shots to pick from. And he's sitting pretty. He only needs two more. Yes. Oh. Don't know if he wanted to draw it back that much. And... <laughs> uh, but he hit it with confidence. And there it there is. We go. He's got that first game. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. So it's one He's got to hit. one to one. First game for him. Yes. So the match is tied at one one and a race to three. Ruslan will be breaking as we said earlier. It is alternating breaks in in the one pocket event. He is a very, very tall man. Oh, he is. He is. Really nice guy, though. And the uh, majority of these, these guys are just unbelievably friendly. If you ever get a chance to come to Derby, you, you'll be amazed. Uh, Dalton has a friend of his that comes to Derby's here, too. Uh, NASCAR race driver Tony Stewart. And Tony's oh, wow. here in the audience. Uh, got here yesterday, I believe. Okay. So just so everyone knows, this pocket is Ruslan's. That is the bottom left pocket. Yes. Shannon is over here on the bottom right. They left him clustered up pretty well on that uh, oh, yeah. that break. He's but that's what these guys can look and study the, the ball cluster and see the things that can come out and go to the pocket. The only other game that that you study it that much uh, is uh, straight pool. Mm -hmm. Straight pool. Yeah.
those are two curriculums for up and coming players that if you've never played and you want to learn ball patterns, play some straight pool. You can play by yourself and see how many balls you can run. <coughs> Be like Mr. Smith, 400, Mr. 400. <laughs> or Chris Melling yesterday in the one pocket of... 243. Oh, I'm 244? sorry. 244? 244. 244. You're right. Absolutely yes. right. So what just happened there, you guys, is um, Ruslan, he fouled, so he has to owe a ball. He took a foul, and that was a defensive move. That was on purpose. Sometimes it's easier to give up a point than give up a shot, or most of the times it is, if you have no other options. And I'm not sure, did he thin one coming out? He didn't, nope, so he, he did, did the not. same He's thing. He took a foul. Mm -hmm. From our angle, sometimes you can feather one or, as I said, thin it uh, enough that, that it's not always detectable from... Our angle. From, yes. Uh, from, or from even our anybody to watch From our monitor. <laughs> we're not able to see the table live mm -hmm. from where we're uh, broadcasting from. And I mean, it's sometimes even hard to see, even if you're right straight up on the table. Well, one of the techniques that as a referee we use, I try to see the number on the ball, oh, gotcha. especially on solid balls. If we can see the number, you can see if it moves. Gotcha. As I refer to it, seeing the whites of the eyes of the <laughs> ball. It's really tough to have to shoot in between, over, or around certain things. That yeah, just looks like a tough shot. You know, they refer to the uh, to these events as being cue ball fouls only, <laughs> but there's other considerations with that. If they move two balls, that becomes a uh, a, f a foul. And Oh, oh look my at that. goodness! Beautiful shot, beautiful. Very nice shot, and he leaves himself a bank on the floor, maybe. Yes. Okay. I, don't, I can't really tell if it's just you know too straight on. He's looking. No, he does not go for it. He's going to try to go ahead and bank this three down all the way back to the same pocket. Boy, from that angle. Oh, nope. Again, not doing anything that I think yeah, he's going to do. It's a defensive move uh, that's pretty much referred to in one pocket as, as a down table game where you start to move balls down to the head rail. Got it. And I've learned that um, when you move all the balls and you wedge it in one area, it's the Nick Varner wedge. Yes, absolutely. Picking things up. Teach an old dog new tricks. I haven't seen Nick this year, but I expect that he'd be here. Usually he's here for the Hall of Fame. And nice. uh, fantastic gentleman and still plays plays real well. World champion and uh, multiple Hall of Famer. You know, it's really tough. You know, uh, when you have had such a high in your career in pool, and, you know, as you get older, you know, you have a family and life happens. It's kind of like, what do you want to keep doing? Do you want to enjoy your family or do you want to? Well, you know, Nick has done it from the businessman side of things. He has uh, a billiard supply business. Um, he has a, a line of cues and uh, does very well. Uh, and this is why they, I appreciate they, your they, knowledge. They, you know they, they have all kinds of cloth. He has a nice little little shop. Uh, I want to believe it's in o Owensboro, Kentucky. Uh, but if you need any cloth, need any products, Nick's a good one to go to. Up until this uh, last year in the Moscone Cup, Nick was the captain of the last time that the U.S. had won in 2009. Wow. So he must have been so proud. 
proud to see us get back. We were all proud to see us get back on the winning side of the cup. What an incredibly was. crazy roller coaster. Yes, it has been. Say I'm tiny, but man, boy, I look huge on TV. Yeah, he's, you know, these guys are not thinking one ball ahead. They're they're looking at the whole rack because they've got to consider where the position is going to be. Because if they open it up, as we saw earlier, you can watch a guy such stand there and punish you by running out. And you don't get back to the table. Correct. And remember, it's just a race race to three. These are short races. Yes. You know, in the rotation games, playing safe, you either pick that you're playing the object ball safe or the cue ball safe. In this game, you don't really have that option. You you're want to make sure you move something so that it's out of play and also cue ball where they don't have a shot. Mm -hmm. Makes it for a lot more control. Wow. Nice. Nice defense. Very nice defense. All righty. Another. Well, Taking another foul. Uh, one each. One game apiece. That's a. You have one foul each, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's two for Chenikov. For okay. Riesling. Where's his other mark? Oh, she we, put a little. She put, yeah, she's putting asterisks up there. Okay, but he's only got one mark up here, though, right? I can't quite see their pennies on the table. Yeah. I don't know. Did he pay the twos on the spot? So did he pay with the two? Maybe not. I don't think. We'll find out. Yeah. It's a pretty good match here. Yes. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Uh -huh. Shannon's got to come with it here. Yeah. Yeah, he may punish him. On He's got a bunch. So Shanna's shooting to the lower right. Yes. Yeah, Ruslan's got a bunch of balls in front of his pocket. Shannon's got to be careful. Yeah, He's shooting the 15 and then going to draw back for the 13. Just, whoa, whoa. Damn. He let that go. Didn't find the brakes on it for sure. Wow, nice cut. Yeah, he hit that a little fat on purpose so he could get up above that three ball. I think he got back to where he wanted. Well, if I'm counting yeah. right, that's five balls for Shannon, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine on the table. Four. So there's six balls missing. Yep. Look how good he hit this. So he missed it. He hit it hard enough to get it up table, so 
so there wouldn't leave a, an easy wasn't an bank, easy back bank in the left. Corner. Yeah. Okay, so does he got six or five? Chenikov, oh, so Shannon yeah. must have. He must have uh, six. Yes. It's the way I count it. Yes, I agree. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. Yeah, never been wrong, just mistaken. <laughs> Round six. We still got way too many one pocket players left. Went into this round with, uh, I think, 87 players left. Right. I think that's what it was. Yeah, it's too many. Too many to get to the f finals tomorrow night? Yes, to yeah. Thursday night supposed to be the finals. Yeah. Let's see if that we happens. I don't want to be like we did last year. We had to delay the finals until Friday night. Yeah. Gonna have to do some shuffling with the schedule. Yeah. Yeah, because we just started the nine ball today as well. Yeah, we're playing these guys to death and how many how many players did we end up with in nine ball today? Uh best I can tell it looks like uh four oh six. How does that stand compared to previous years? It's a record. Record. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I all think three events then. Yeah. Yeah, I think the best year ever before was like 380, I think, so. Yeah, I couldn't believe that on Friday when y'all told me that <laughs> we had 500 people in the banks. How many tables do we have? We went out there and told them to cut it off at 500. Yeah. Because we were actually supposed to cut it off at 475, but when we looked up, it was at 497. And we are like, holy crap, because nobody was paying attention. So we ran out there and told them to stop. Chad had told Julie to quit taking sign-ups at 500 because mm -hmm. she had people in line. I counted the people in line. There were 53 people in line. And there were several that were upset that they couldn't get into the banks. I don't know. You know obviously, I don't think all the people were in line for banks. But, right. yeah. How I'm, many I'm, tables do we have available at, at that derby that they're playing on when we play these? Well, there's 47 total tables. However, four of them are for straight pool. And, you know, there's, yeah, there's, you know, five of them are in the action room. So, well, not I enough. I know at some point I had, I had to actually use some of the action rooms to get Yes, some there were two done. days that we used the action room from 9 a.m. all the way to midnight. Yes. And we're still struggling to make everything fit. It's that buyback. You know, you never know who's buying back, how many people right. are buying back. And I have people go, why don't they bring in more tables? Well, it's yeah. not that. We don't have more rooms to put right. tables in. Right, yeah, no, I'd love to. It would be great to have 60 tables, but yeah. where are you going to put them? Yeah. yeah the uh, casino is going through a remodel this year. Yeah, with yeah on change. top of everything. Yeah, <laughs> the law the changed where they don't have to be on the water anymore, and they're building basically the new casino part. Yeah, and it's it, probably you know, going to take, what, two years or three years to complete? Yeah, I think uh, we're supposed to have a food court next year. It's supposed to be done. Who knows, dude? I mean, I like the vendors down the hallway, but man, that's that's crowded. It is. It is. It gets it gets pretty pretty crowded. Yeah, they have a moving sidewalk. If you've never been here, that to get back to the hotel, and then every year, a big part of it is broke down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, never but, fails. But it, but it has become the safe zone because there's also a uh, golf cart shuttle moving people back and right even yeah. if it's broke down on the uh, the moving sidewalk I walk there because it's, it's a safe zone away oh from yeah. the golf cart yeah yeah the lady was honking at me last night but there was a section where you can't get out of the way because right. the vendor had closed his booth and yeah. it goes right to that line yeah. I'm like you can keep honking lady until I get to another 15 feet there's okay. nowhere for me to go yeah yeah, I think there's been a couple of people bumped by the cart. That yeah, yeah. Well, this is interesting. Basically, we have a Nick Varner wedge in the middle of the table. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, pretty odd. I don't think I've ever seen 
a cluster like this close to the player's pocket. And, and they're all on uh, Ruslan's side of the table. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's uh, well, that was interesting. Yeah. Made well, a made a ball in the wrong pocket. Which problem is, is he lined up some balls here now. That that 11, 10, 6 is yeah. not a tough shot now. Plus the nine balls cleared. I'm guessing Shannon's not real thrilled with that result. Yeah. This is yeah. Th this those, is those pretty three, easy. Yeah. It's a really nice right into the pocket. Yeah. This ain't as easy but it goes if, into the yeah, pocket if those are moving those out of the way and, now and that goes into the pocket so yeah mm. wow that is brave oh, no. brave look at this he left it so shannon can't take it out great shot yeah. super lucky that that got behind the seven that really makes it tough on shannon yeah, I wish we had a camera angle to tell whether that one's frozen right there in front of Shannon or not. That one ball? Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping that uh, I was trying to talk uh, Diamond into letting me put up Lipman lights next year, but I don't think they'll go that route. Yep. However, that wood plank that goes in between the lights, yep. if uh, I can find a camera that'll work, I don't, I don't think they're high enough is the problem. The GoPro 7 has a fisheye lens in it, but I don't think it'll be high enough for a 9-foot table right. to get that straight-down look. But, man, that would be nice. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> what, what a shot. A, absolutely. To, uh, well, I haven't seen the rest of the match, but if that ain't the shot of the match, I don't know what is. That was beautiful. That was just got, amazing. Got contact, got the rail. Amazing. Didn't have to give up a ball, still sitting on six, needing two to be out. Wow. Wow. Yeah, see, the, and the mistake that Shannon made by breaking these out and lining up those combos is he couldn't even shoot the seven towards his hole because you risk Ruslan being able to make those shots. Well, that's what I was asking about that one. If, if it wouldn't froze, he had a, a dinker right. that, that could have played an easy safe, so I suspect it was frozen. Yeah, well, and that 11 to the 10-6 to the is so lined up that, that uh, well, that's, he's going to owe one here, plus he leaves the 7 straight in. Well, I think that's about three he owes now. Yeah, and Shannon, this is an easy shot for Shannon. So... That was a huge mistake. I'm not sure what he was yeah. doing there. Oh. I think he was hoping to thin off of yeah, one of those he and lay up about like he did, but he didn't get it thin. This should, this should do it for yes, Shannon. Absolutely. That was a huge mistake by Ruslan. Uh-oh, oh. did Shannon hit it with enough gas? No. Oh, oh there you go. Just got it in. I'm played, pretty sure. Played, played it beautifully at table speed. That, uh, they're counting balls. Yeah, they're counting them, but I'm pretty sure that's eight. Has to be. Well, let's double check. Um, yeah, that's, that's eight. Okay. But these guys are being careful to make sure that they know the score is right because once you move the balls, it's, uh, it's concession. Yes, concession. Yes, I and, called it and, on And the, the other one that, that, uh, has run into problems, especially when these guys get tired. They forget they owe a ball and think they're out. Yeah. I had to do that to uh, Dennis Orcolo a couple years ago, yeah. which took him out of the all-around running. He was playing Efren, and uh, he thought he was out. And he raked a couple balls off the table, and I had to call it a concession. Well, if you notice, Ruslan just was looking at so it's pretty obvious he was trying to feather off of that ball. That's what he just just tried to bank again, right. just to see what it did. Yeah, giving giving up that seven like that was. Uh, yeah, he'd have been better off taking taking a foul. Either taking a foul. He ended up with a foul anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to take a foul and, and give was, a he shot. He was up. in a pretty deep hole. 
even though everything was on his side of the table. Yeah, that's that's pretty brutal. Come on, boys. They're all they're both smokers, so they're probably both <laughs> taking a smoke break. Yeah, because before that last shot, he would have had to have needed ten to get out. Yeah, yeah. So check out this little commercial. We'll be back in just a second. All right, looks like they're coming back. Yeah. So we should be yeah, able to keep, keep your eye on uh, new things coming from Bad Boys. I, I hear shopping network and all kinds of great Yeah, things. we got some cool stuff coming. Yeah. Backstage pass right there in the picture. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a little show we're going to do. I'm doing some editing on a couple episodes now. Uh, just interviews and stuff with people in the billiard industry, pool halls pool tournaments all kinds of stuff we got uh, lots of live streams out there We're doing Wisconsin this week Michigan next week billiard shopping network go buy sell and trade keep your money in the billiard industry we're gonna take a percentage of the profits and uh, kick it towards pool tournament we're also looking to uh, we talk to a lot of players here, so hopefully in the next month or so we'll be opening individual stores for the pool players. So we'll have like a Justin Bergman store and a Skylar Woodward store. Yeah, possibly. Skylar Woodward store, Jason Shaw, and it'll be products. You know, we're working on some shirt designs for some of those guys. They're going to have their own custom. We, uh, uh, God, I'm having a brain fade. Um, JB Cases is allowing us to uh, design cases with the pro, so it'll have their whatever they their look is, their favorite colors, and design some JB Cases for the pros with their signature on it. And those will only be available at the Billiard Shopping Network. All right. Hopefully, some of those photographer guys out there will get pictures of these guys and have them sign them and. They'll sell autographed pictures in their stores. And I'm just going to keep building. But it'd uh, be nice to, you know, you want something in the billiard industry, you want to buy something or sell something, you can just go to one place. Have it all right there. Lights, tables, everything. Yeah, I might have to sit down and talk to you about that. Yeah. Yep. Get, get, get my products out there from BQ yeah. views that I do. and. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get a we're gonna try nice to. We did a live products. show. Yeah. We did a live show in November just to kick off the show. Yeah. Um, we're hoping once we get more and more people involved that we'll do uh, at least two, maybe four live shows every year. Yeah. We're gonna do some bits and pieces at uh, the BCAPL Worlds this year. So yeah, the Worlds are in July, probably yeah. for the last time for a while. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to try to do a show then. I'd like to do at least a uh, Billiard Shopping Network live show every Christmas, you know, in November. Mm -hmm. So that uh, people can offer some merchandise at discounts, Christmas prices or whatever. But we can, with a live show, we can introduce that stuff to to the public. So, yeah, I think, you know, we're, we're going to keep beating it over the over the head. And hopefully people will check it out and like it. Yeah, very nice, very nice idea. 
but let's see what we can do with it. Like I said, it's the goal is to keep every, you know, the pool industry is huge, but not huge like, you know, Facebook or, or uh, I don't want to step on anybody's toes or like eBay or, you know, so Absolutely. if we can do put everybody, all the, everybody in the industry into one billiard shopping network, then we're advertising for each other. Yes. You know, instead of me having 500 customers, if you got a store and I got a store, Predator opens a store in there. We all do stores now. All of a sudden, we got 200,000 customers all walking, like a big shopping mall, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Exactly what I was thinking. It's yes. like a shopping mall. You've got... Yes. And then instead of the the profits going to um, somebody's yacht... You know, we're going to kick them back to a pool tournament or two or three. or You know, it just depends on how big we get. We get yeah. big enough, you know, we can do a lot of things. Take care of some of these pool players. Put in some retirement packages, stuff like that. So, we'll see what happens. I don't know what, what happened to these two, but they're taking way too long of a break. You know, that's what we've always said. that uh, One pocket can be a slow game, and I always said that... Uh, we should get one of the <laughs> paint companies as a sponsor because it's, sometimes it can be like watching paint dry. I'm telling you. That'd be a great commercial. This paint dries faster than a Game one, one pocket, pocket match. <laughs> 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 I like it. Come on, guys. Let's play some pool. So, yeah, go check us out. Tell your friends. BillyardShoppingNetwork.com. You can also go to badboys.tv, subscribe, tell your friends. If you subscribe, then every time we go live, you'll get notified. We're all over the country all year long. We, show, me, uh, show me that commercial one more time that you had. I like that. That was, that was pretty sharp. It's, it's my, my weak talent, but I'm learning. started playing with uh, PowerPoint. And that's the only flyers I had when I started. I wish I had them for every event at the time I made this one, but it's not too shabby. I had music to it. I had to turn it off, though, because the, the guy that did the music put his music up on Spotify. But he's written me a couple songs that we can use as just instrumental and won't be put up on Very nice. one of those things. A couple of those see pictures are yeah, funny. See the crew and staff? Of bad boys. Yeah. Yeah. That's my next problem is I got to get enough uh, material that I can play with to do these kind of things. I don't have enough piled up. But uh, we bought a bought a smooth, which is really awesome. Sophia's been running around with that here and getting some good little video clips and stuff. So this is not really our specialty so we got to play with it and figure it out and learn it but there's so much cool stuff out there now all right so got to cut that short because we're back at the match finally shannon breaking yeah the breaker pretty much has a two ball favorite when you're playing one pocket if you're if you're evenly matched the breakers usually two balls favorite Well, how brave are you? Do you cut that, cut that four in there and bust everything open and try to run out? He tried it. Tried it last rack. Did he? <laughs> and it didn't work out. Well, if you don't, you don't hit it good. Then. But these young guys are aggressive. Yeah. It's all about where the cue ball goes. Yeah, he hit that much more controlled. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hmm. Well, is that 12-15 lined up? Man, it sure looks like it. No, I try to draw a straight line, but I, I think it hits the point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he if it to, didn't. He's, he's going to move this ball that's in front of uh, yeah, his pocket. Yeah. Watch out for the double kiss. Oh, yeah, it was oh. lined up. Wow. There was a ball lined up there. 
Either he just made a great shot or he missed so bad it was awesome. <laughs> no, I think. No, he he, 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 saw he made a great shot. <laughs> just from the angle I was at, it didn't look like he was going into the stack. It looked like he was going to play that ball. It was down, yeah. down in front no, of the that was, that was a great shot. I, I think well, we're about to be 2-2. Two, two. Yes, I think mean, that's, that's the reason these young guys are so aggressive and they got no fear. No. No, when, well, you know, you know these old, guys old shoot school guys so would have shot that. Yeah, but see, the old school guy, you know, I love to have that debate because the old old school guys didn't play on equipment that rolled as true and as good. And that's I think that's, that's the true. reason. That's true. Yeah. You know, the, the cloth wasn't as good. Everything's better. And therefore, I think the game is better now yeah. than it. You know, than it was. You go back and watch some of the old videos, and you see a ball roll off right at the very end. And you know, they. I think the players now have a lot more confidence in the equipment. Yeah. Watching a lot of one pocket when I was growing up down in Alabama. It's a different game now, isn't it? Oh, it is. <laughs> Plus, we had we had. I watched the old school different stuff. variations. We also had. What do they call side? Where you had one side, I had the other side, or you'd have multiple players that would have pockets. Right. And all kinds of things were played back in the day when I was growing Everybody up. wanted to have a little gimmick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's five balls and counting. Oh, whew, I yep. thought he missed it. Six. Nope. Just cut that 14. Just make sure you don't. It really, you kind of want to just come right up and hit the three. Don't want to get behind it. You want to hit the three. Yep, he did. Yep, just like that. That should be it. Just like that, 2-2. Two, two. So that break was no good. Yep. That was no good. Well, he thinks he needs another one. But yeah, all right, rubbing it in now. Just for insurance. Make oh, sure you had it. I don't want to do it there. I need to do it right here. There we go. 2-2, two, two, just like that. Let's see if we can get that asterisk off of that one. I'll buy his name. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I got to. Ah, here we go. I thought you guys just put that up there because he was rushing. No. Nope. <laughs> I'm kidding. That was supposed to be our neg <laughs> negative ball count. Well. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Because I think you can fit. I don't know. Why, why I don't know switch if pockets? I don't know if the software would take the negative or not. Yeah. Why? Why cross? I don't like switching pockets. You just ran well, eight now. I think the first rack, I think that society was on. The, but yeah. they've had a smoke break since then. I could be wrong. Yeah, but he just ran eight and out in the other pocket. So just my personal preference. I don't change. When, when I win at a pocket, I don't switch. <laughs> he's left him a bankable ball. Yeah, he's also left a ball in the jaws. Now so. Left a bankable, and, but if he misses, like you said, it could be trouble. Could be a lot of trouble. Yeah. Because basically, whoever wins this rack wins the match. Yeah. Because it's a race to three, and we're standing at two two. What you got? And he missed the bankable ball. No, hold on a second. I'm pretty sure it's just a foul. Hold on, let me double check. Because that's a weird one. Okay. Let's see what Ruslan can do with this. He's going to take his set and duck and try to get position for the next shot. Oh, yeah. See how many ducks he can pick off here. He's leading one. 
He's looking at his stack and trying to determine where he wants to be with the cue ball after this shot. Ruslan got a ball. Yes. He took that hanging duck he had. And yeah. I was having a brain fart. He was asking me, they're playing nine ball. Yeah. I was thinking one, they were playing one pocket. So, yeah, ball in hand. Foul. Miscued on the scratch. Uh -oh. yeah, one pocket, it's a little weird. Yes. I'm pretty sure your opponent has to shoot from where the cue ball lies in your oil ball. If you miss cue on the on the break and don't make nothing, don't hit nothing. Which is, yeah, that's what it should be. It's funny how many pros don't know the rules. That's true. That's so the other day they were saying a guy purposely, but but he double hit the cue ball knocked in the guy's ball into the other guy's pocket and he says hey I fouled and they, he wanted to spot that ball back up with one of his own balls I'm like no that ball stays down because you the rule says you either pocket the cue ball or jump it off the table you bring up the opponent's ball mm -hmm. but he didn't do that he just fouled and I had four pros arguing with me about it I'm like no guys he can't call a foul on himself and you have to bring up both ball. You know, his ball and his opponent's ball. That's that's why everybody tries so hard to, to make a scratch or jump the cue ball off the table yes, so to bring it up. But we're talking guys like Josh Roberts and you know, strong one-pocket players. They had no clue. It was pretty funny. A lot of times it's because a situation comes up that they've never considered doing. Yeah. yeah. All right, so he's got three balls at the moment. Or did we miss Shannon making anything? I nope. think you're right. Yep, should be three. One, two, three, four. Yeah, three. Interesting. Yeah, that's as I said earlier, one pocket is like like chess. Yep. It's, it's move, Three railing? moves and positions defending your your pocket, not leaving anything for your oh, opponent. No, no. Okay, so Ruslan's the left pocket. I forgot he switched. Yes. Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> Make it tough for us to keep score. <laughs> He's got Shannon in a jam, though. Yeah, how are these guys uh, standing? Or either one of them have a loss already, or do you know? I don't know. I'd have to get up there and look. Yeah. Actually, let's see what Sophia's got going over here. Yeah, her screen is froze up, I think, on there. I think Shannon's won the one pocket before, has he not, at Derby? No, he has not. He has not, no. Okay. No. Shannon Dalton, that's one pocket, yeah. Looks like Shannon has lost in one pocket. Okay. So or has a loss. on his rebuy already, so. And he just took a, a negative. Ruslan came with a nice bank, just didn't quite get enough speed on it. Just, but he left it hanging in the pocket. Huh. That's weird. This list that she's got over here doesn't even show Ruslan on it. Yeah, as far as I know, Shannon's the only player that's in both 
that was inducted into both the Banks Hall of Fame and the One Pocket Hall of Fame the same year. Same year? Yes. yes. There's a number of players that are in both. Right, But right. they didn't get inducted the same year. He got inducted the same year for both Hall of Fames. Well, nice shot. Yes, absolutely. Nice shot. Read, read the stack and yeah, picked it's, out it's the dead pretty, ball. Pretty key to be able to read a stack in one pocket yeah. and make or break you. So that gives him one, two. Yeah, he could get out. Got to do a little work, though. Yeah, he wanted that two next, clear it for the three. You can expect him to... Yeah, swing that cue ball around, get behind everything yeah, again. Try to kill it a little bit. And maybe go over and all the way back for the eight. Yep. Uh, swing it right on around. Yeah, he I think he wants to shoot the eight next. And the idea yeah, situation yeah, just, would yeah. be to shoot the eight and just drift over yep. to like here so he can shoot the 12, then that one, then that one. And he's but he's going to go he still owes one five too, so first keep that in and, mind. Yeah, and pull back. Oh, he hit that bad. He jumped up too. Yep. That might have just cost him. That might have just cost him the match. Yeah, that that should yeah. cost him the match. So did he get one or two then? Well, he he owed one, and he so he put it out there, and he made that ball that he missed. He made it up there by him in a corner, so he had to spot it as well. Right, so but did he get a a ball? Let's see, two. Okay. That'd be three. Yes. So, yeah, Shannon's got a count of one ball. Oh, let us see. Right? Or am I mistaken? Let's see. We'll check this here. Because now Ruslan has three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. No, so Shannon doesn't have anything. My bad. I thought he made two and then had the error. All right, so that should be four balls for Ruslan, right? Three, four. Eight balls on the Five, table. Five, six. Yeah. Well, all he's got to do is... I think all he's got to do is make one more, then. Shannon has nothing. There should only be seven balls left on the table for the win. Well, that's what's on the table now, seven. Yeah, we missed a ball somewhere then. I didn't think Shannon had anything. I thought he had one after the payback, but maybe he had, maybe he had more. Uh, we missed Ruslan, something yeah. somewhere because yeah. Ruslan's still shooting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> mm, does, does he, he need them? just one more? Gotta yeah, be just I one. I think more. so. I think so. Two. You shooting the combo here? No, surely not. Yeah. Yep. What a shot! And that's it. That has to be it. Yep. What a match, folks! Thanks for watching Bad Boys TV. This is the 21st annual Derby City Classics One Pocket Division. Thank you, Mr. Ricky Bryant, for hopping in here. No problem. I enjoyed it. We'll I'm see you get guys back out later. on the floor and do some referee work. Yeah, get to work, man.